Great. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the invitation. And thank you so much, Trey, for giving me a, an easy talk to defend. So uh, these are my disclosures. Even before start, I start stating the obvious, which is to wait for mild cervical myelopathy, I would like to ask whether this is even a fair question. That is, is cervical myelopathy a simple binary disease where you can turn it on and off whether you operate or just simply wait? Because as we know, cervical myelopathy is rather a complex spectrum of related disorders affecting the aging spine. As you see on the diagram on the right side, there are multiple etiologies causing myelopathy. As you know, there's the degenerative kind beginning with disc degeneration, leading to oncovertebral and facet joint arthrosis, as you have heard from Dr. Ree. Ligamentous hypertrophy and calcification also can cause OPLL and other uh, ossification of the ligaments. There's the congenital kind along with the syndromic cases. On top of the static compressive pathologies that I have described in the previous slide, there are dynamic compressive pathologies such as the one you see in this slide with ligamentous laxity causing hypermobile neck, causing spinal cord compression with flexion and extension. Even when you diagnose the cause, uh, then we have to determine the severity of disease. And we do this by looking at the modified Japanese Orthopedic Association scoring system. And this is an 18 point scale divided into mild, moderate, and severe cases. In severe myelopathy, uh, you can actually score anywhere from zero to 11. But if you look at the mild one, you only have a little uh, wiggle room, meaning that you have to fall within 15 to 17 points. Uh, this actually uh, score scale is uh, skewed towards severe cervical myelopathy, while this is a disease-specific spe instrument that is responsive to change. It actually suffers from ceiling effect. In other words, it is rather difficult to detect minor improvements in patients with milder disease. Hopefully I have convinced, that, uh, convinced you that you, you should watch and wait and not operate on mild uh, cervical myelopathy from the get-go. The question still remains, is this a fair question to ask? Well, the cervical myelopathy may not be a simple uh, disease, but the treatments that we have at our disposal is actually binary you operate or you don't. In that case, this is a still a fair, de a fair debate. And then you may ask, isn't this debate already over? As you know, the classic studies and others subsequently has already shown that natural history of cervical myelopathy is stepwise neurologic decline with variable per periods of quiescence. It doesn't really get better with just waiting around. On top of that, there are landmark papers. For example, this one from 2013 with uh, Failings et al. Uh, clearly showed that surgical decompression can improve function, disability, and quality of life, life after one year in all disease severity, even in mild cases. And the complications were only 18.7%. However, when you think about this uh, study, this is a surgical paper and not a, it does not offer non-surgery as an option. So you cannot really conclude based on this paper that non-surgery is appropriate for mild cervical myelopathy. On top of that, I would argue 18.7% complication rate is still 18.7 complication rate. And if this happens to you, you may think twice about this. Subsequently, uh, Dr. Gogawala uh, did a randomized clinic, clinical trial that we heard last year, and it came out on paper this year. This is a randomized trial uh, comparing anterior and posterior surgery. Interestingly, the authors have concluded that actually ventral surgery approach did not significantly improve patient reported physical functioning for myelopathy. In other words, you undergo this massive anterior cervical spine surgery and still don't get better, don't, uh, don't have any improvement in your neurologic symptoms. On top of that, your complication rate is 48% if you go through the front and 24% if you go through the back. 
Then let's look at some of the papers that studied non-surgical management. This is a systematic review by Dr. Reed from 2013. Recommendation, if there is a role for non-operative treatment as a primary treatment modality, it may be in the patient with mild myelopathy. Secondly, a few years later, uh, Dr. Reed being the second author in this paper, uh, updated that when you pull patients with mild and moderate myelopathy, there's actually no improvement in MJOA scores uh, from baseline without surgery. However, if you look at the paper very closely, there are subgroups of patients who do get better. 2.3 point improvement, which is way above MCID with non-operative care in soft disc herniation patients who are expected to have regression of their disc. 1.7 point improvement in dynamic cervical myelopathy with simple bracing. So in certain cases, non-operative treatment for mild, mild myelopathy is appropriate. In the same journal issue, the leaders of Cervical Spine Society, Research Society put out this clinical guideline and suggested that a supervised trial of structural rehab for mild myelopathy may be appropriate, although uh, the evidence was weak. More recently, this is a review paper uh, that dealt with the mild cervical disease. And the, the author stated that the natural history of degenerative cervical myelopathy, particularly for individuals with uh, mild impairment, remains completely understood. Perhaps this is because MGOA and conventional MRI may not be sensitive enough to detect mild disease. Therefore, uh, they concluded that we should actually uh, take in a personalized approach to their care instead of offering surgery from the get-go. Over the past decade, I've had a number of uh, patients who not only had cervical disease, but thoracolumbar uh, diseases that require something like this. And every time I look at their x-rays, I am reminded that surgery is irreversible. So if the patient presents to you with the mild cervical myelopathy, it may not be such a bad idea to watch and wait, offer them non-surgical uh, non treatments, have them come back on uh, multiple occasions for close neurologic uh, follow-up until you really need to pull out that big surgical gun. So the question I'm going to leave you with is, what would you do if you have mild cervical myelopathy and this is your neck? Thank you.